So now, if you look at the kernel itself, okay, if you look at the Linux kernel itself, okay, it will it is split up into a lot of different modules. Okay, so one module which handles your process management. So whatever I am talking is with respect to the kernel subsystem. There is a kernel subsystem which deals with the process management itself. And there is one process uh, kernel subsystem which deals with the memory management. There is one uh, kernel subsystem which deals with the file system. And there is one uh, kernel subsystem which deals with the device uh, controls, basically, which, which will help you to access the drivers directly. And there is one subsystem which deals with the networking. So these are all the different subs kernel subsystems what is present in the kernel. If you take any Linux kernel, right, you will find these are the main uh, subsystem what you will find inside the kernel, okay? So, uh, what, for example, we did most of the things. For example, we dealt with some uh, uh, parts in the uh, in our system programming, which deals with the process management, like forking, creating a process, okay, dealing with the threads, scheduling, all those things we understood. That is all the parts about this current process management subsystem, and it also deals with concurrency and multitasking. Okay, so this is one part of a thing that you will find in the process management subsystem. Okay, and most of the time, this part of the code so so uh, whenever you take the kernel uh, code right it will have two parts one is your a generic algorithm which is not dependent on any architecture for example whenever i talk about scheduling algorithm schedule most of the scheduling algorithm will be architecture independent means whichever architecture it is that scheduling algorithm will not change much enough but there will be some part of the code which will be architecture dependent because they want to make a full use of the that particular architecture to get a better performance so some part of the code they will introduce an architecture dependent code for example whenever you talk about scheduling some part of the code that is related to an architecture is, for example, the register set, which is uh, local to that subsystem, dif is different to different architecture. So some part of the code would change there, okay? And then whenever you do the process management, you have to deal with other things like caching and uh, swapping the page tables. And so all those architecture part of the code will come. So that is the reason if you look at it, whenever we deal with the process management code, so which is main responsibility is to deal with concurrency and multitasking, okay? So you'll find some part of an architecture architecture dependent code here most of the time process management is part of the code which will have most of the architecture dependent code here okay. and this part of the code ultimately all the kernel subsystem code is meant to access certain hardware so this part of the code mostly interacts with your cpu to get the necessary job done that is what i wanted to stress here so when you come to the memory management so we studied about a lot of things about memory management, even in the system programming, like doing a map, uh, creating a map and allocating the pages and multiple things, basically. Okay. So all of those things are responsible and it, it is meant to deal with the virtual memory. Virtual Complete me virtual memory handling will be done this by this memory management subsystem. Not this alone. It also deals about there are some kind of special allo allocators, basically something like your heap allocator, what you see in the user space, right? Something like that you would find even in the kernel also. So the, all those parts will be available in this Linux kernel. Okay. So now, so this part of the code, most probably it will be an architecture independent code. And then this part of the subsystem will deal with your memory parts. It will deal with your memory. This is something which... I wanted to stress. Okay. Then after that, in our system programming session, we dealt with many file system mechanisms. And all of those things, there is a kernel subsystem in the file system, most probably all this VFS and other things, which is very generic in nature, which deals with all the file system. But ultimately, this has to interact with some file system type. Okay. So there will be some logic related to that also. And this indirectly, this file system will interact with your block device because ultimately it has to write the data to your block device. It could be your disk or it could be your CDs. It, it has to deal with it. So the flow is if you do any operation in the file system, which is responsible of dealing, uh, which is responsible to deal with the files and directories. So that would go and interact with the file systems. And that in turn will interact your block devices. And ultimately it will go and access your disk or CDs or your storage device. That is something which I wanted to stress here. And this is where the flow goes. Okay, and when you come to the device control, for example, if you want to access any of the devices, there are certain mechanisms to access the devices and that this device control subsystem module in the kernel is responsible for all of those things. And it deals with the TTV access, device access and all of those things. And most of the time, this will deal with accessing your character devices. We'll understand all of what all of these things are. And it'll end up accessing a lot of devices, like it could be a console, mouse, keyboard, all of those things access is done via this route. 
and at the end the major part that is nothing but your networking subsystem okay which deals with all your connectivity which will go to the network subsystem part of your kernel and indirectly it lacks us your network drivers what we call it as an if drivers and then that would end up ultimately accessing your network interface cards hardware okay so if you look at it all the kernel subsystem will have a necessary parts their role to play inside a kernel and ultimately it will access certain part of an hardware that is something which we wanted to mention here okay so this is one of the thing which i wanted to stress in this specific case and most of the time right all this there are certain parts which is which you can't make them so modern for example let us assume that you want to for a, if you take a linux right process management is the core of the linux and if you want to make the core itself as a kernel module kernel module is something like that you can attach to the code and you can enhance the feature and whenever you don't want you can remove the feature it is something like for example you will have you will have a switchboard and you can connect whatever you want to the socket and you can play the play you can get a different features right something like that you can deal with inside the kernel that feature is called as a module but there are certain part of the core features of the kernel which you can never break it as a separate entity and you can attach to the kernel on the fly for example the memory management is an integral part of the subsystem you can't make them as a kernel module or for example your process management memory management okay and your core file system handling like vfs and all those things okay and your core network parts okay so i'm not talking about the network stack but the core networking uh, calls okay so all those things can't be made as a driver so most of the things what we make it as a module is your file systems block drivers okay and your network drivers all of those things we make them as a kernel module we will understand what all of those things are but we need to understand uh, one thing like what can be made as a module and what cannot be made as a module or something which we need to understand here okay so this is something which i wanted to stress here and this is the complete view about your how the linux kernel is organized and how the different parts will be interacted will be interacting and and how it will work as one single subsystem that is what i wanted to stress here okay so any doubts or questions till this point okay if there is anything please let me know okay so now one thing what you need to understand is the programming what you make in a user space and the programming what you do with a kernel space are, are there are some lot of differences between them even though it's a c programming okay there are a lot of differences between your application programming and your standard kernel programming so we need to understand so for example kernel will not have an access to your c library at all okay it doesn't have an access to your standard c library or your standard c headers for example if you start writing a code just same similar to your normal standard application programming right that may not compile in the linux kernel that is something which you have to understand okay and then after that your most of the kernel code will be written in gnu c so even though the c is a generic standard there are a lot of variants of c gnu c is one variant of c where there are a lot of uh, features uh, for example if you look at a lot of attributes and other things comes into the picture right so those are more specific to gnu c those are not something which comes as a part of your standard c okay so we tend to use a lot of gnu c features inside the kernel so we will understand some of them but your kernel code most of the times will be written across using some standard gnu c features so it is tightly coupled with your gnu c okay so that is something which you need to understand here and then after that there is no proper memory protection in uh, in linux kernel as you see in the user space so which means that in case of an user space programming right if you make any memory corruption right only your application will crash and everything will work fine but that is not a case in case of your linux kernel so for example if any one of the module or any one of the feature inside the kernel um, uh, create some kind of a memory corruption and it crashes some due to some reasons this i probability that your whole kernel will crash or your whole kernel will behave abnormally so this is something which you have to keep in mind okay so when you are writing a code you should take care of all the memory aspects and write a co code very carefully else you will end up corrupting your entire subsystem so this is something which you need to understand and one more thing what you need to remember is that the floating point operation itself is not fully supported in the kernel so kernel doesn't support floating point operations okay so it doesn't mean that you can't use a floating point operation you can use but you have to do some kind of a specific actions to support a floating point operation but by default a linux kernel doesn't support floating point operations because it doesn't want to deal with the complexity of floating point uh, 
modules. For example, whenever you deal with the floating point instructions, right, you will get, you will end up accessing a lot of floating point uh, registers and you have to deal with them and you, it will end up in a lot of complexity. So they don't want to end up in all of those things. So that is the reason they don't support, by default, they don't support any floating point operation. In, in case, if you tend to use the floating point operations directly in the kernel, then it would give give kind of an error actually it would not work actually we can see that but it would not support by default okay and then after that kernel will have a small stack the kernel see normally right if you look at the programming right you'll have a kernel space and a user space okay so for user space you'll have one stack and a user space stack normally grows okay it is not a fixed size it's a big size and moreover it's a growable stack it keeps growing based on the need basis but Kernel will also have a stack and it is local to each process. So basically, if I create 10 processes, right, then it will have 10 user space stacks and 10 kernel stacks and the kernel stack size is fixed and it doesn't grow and it's also small. So that is the reason you have to deal with, you have to remember that lot of stack operation which can create to overflow can create a lot of problems. So you have to deal with all of those things carefully. Because since the stack size is small, right? So uh, doing a lot of jumps and uh, to one function to other function and other things can deal with some kind of an issue. So that is something which you have to take care. Okay, so this is one of the main thing what you have to do with. And then, and in kernel, right, you tend to get a lot of interrupts. So you have to deal with preemption, SMP, synchronization, concurrency. So it is very complicated. You have to deal with all of those things while writing a code. So we will learn all of those things. Okay, so same like your threaded programming, right? For example, if you remember, right, when you're dealing with a thread, thread is really good from all aspects, but you have to deal with the uh, your critical section and race conditions, okay? But the similar kind of problem exists even inside the kernel, but it is still more severe because you are running in a privilege mode and if you do any actions there, right, you will end up crashing the complete system. So that is the reason you have to deal with a lot of concurrencies, okay? And then you when to add to this complexity, you will have multiple cores and you have to deal with a lot of uh, synchronization techniques. All of those things has to be dealt with at a very high level, okay? So these are the few aspects which you have to take keep in mind when you're dealing with the kernel code, okay? So you don't have a flexibility to use whatever you want in a programming since there is no C library present. And then you might have to tend to use some programming which is specific to GNU-C, which, which you may not find in other C uh, compilers. That is something which I wanted to stress here. Okay, and then memory protection is something which you have to take care. Floating point, floating point operation is something no in case of the kernel. And then the kernel stack is very small. Set. This is the few things which you have to keep in mind when you are dealing with the kernel programming. That is something which I wanted to stress. Okay, so this is one of the main thing. Yeah. <music>